Now, uh, relying on a single technique, error number two, you need a, a toolkit, not just one tool. So compare your methods to a conventional, uh, say, linear discriminant analysis or linear regression. Linear regression is a pretty good baseline. It's hard to beat linear regression some of the time. And so, like I say, over on the chart there, you want your before and after training and evaluation. That's pretty much what those, the results of, of rule one and rule two are. They have a two by two matrix when you present your results. Now, somebody did a study of neural network journals, refereed journals, that go through a significant process of, of examination. And over a three-year period, now this was about 10 years ago, so it was early on in the enthusiasm of neural networks, five out of the six articles either made mistake one or mistake two. So only one out of six articles over that three-year period both used out of sample data and reported the results of two techniques, you know, a before and after. So only 17% of the articles did that two by two table at minimum. And this is referee journal articles. So you can imagine how conference reports and other kinds of studies, which have even less rigorous uh, review, are, are avoiding, you know, this is a major problem. Uh, and um, I just had a colleague that sent me some results and I said, and he was all this detail about how he got these results and I said, I don't even know if I'm interested in any of this detail. I want to see the, the before and after training and evaluation results before I want to listen to any details about how you got there. So even at Elder Research, we're still, you know, uh, having to remind one another sometimes about that, about that process. If you don't check other methods, if you don't try a second method or a default method, you might blame or credit the algorithm for the results. You might say, oh, my wonderful... Uh, method. There was a fellow who invented something called the multiplanar method, which actually kind of pretty cool. And he was an MD, PhD, you know, overeducated guy. So he had this method where you, you, you build planes and then you separate. It actually turned out to the fan foundation of some really cool stuff um, that we aren't going to cover in the, in the class, but uh, it, it turned out to be a good technique. But he reported his results, his initial results, were really awesome. They were really good. And the, the problem was he thought that the reason it was really good was because of his fancy technique. But actually the reason his results were pretty good was because the data was good. He had gathered good data on, on cancer and the features he'd created did a good job of separating cancer from non-cancer and simple nearest neighbor, linear regression, any kind of a method would do as good or better than his method. But he didn't know that because he thought it was his method that was giving the result. If he'd done a two by two table, he would have known the difference and um, now his, uh, that again the technique was good and went on to, to do very well but not uh, initially there was no real evidence for that. So uh, use a handful of good tools and the good news is once you've done all the hard trouble of transforming the data and understanding the data actually running another algorithm is not twice as much work it's maybe only 10 percent more work because you've got this economy of scale so you could probably build five models for the cost of maybe, you know, twice the cost at most of building just one model. Five different, completely different types of models. So maybe even at the cost of, you know, only 50% worse than doing one model. Okay, so uh, several techniques is not costly and pays off well and makes the boss excited because it looks like you've done five times as much work and you've only done 1.2 times as much work or something like that. So I, I, I remind us of several of the methods that were good for using. We didn't talk about the one I invented in the middle there, but again, spending most of our time on things that you'll actually find in the real world and, uh, and how they'll combine. So if, if one were trying to estimate this surface, I earlier showed this surface as an example of visualization showing us we had an unstable result. But one could also say, well, what if this was the surface I was trying to estimate? Obviously, no single method, decision trees or polynomials or whatever could get it, but some combination could possibly do a pretty good job of approximating that surface.